So for this one, uh, previously, the very my first mistake I made for this class was I asked to students to set up the lab settings configuration during the class, and I thought it was going to be a good exercise. But then guess what? Every following lab depends on this one. So if somebody couldn't get through this one, then they are missing the following lab. So I, I decided, okay, I'm going to just configure everything so that we can just uh, move forward. So for this one, uh, so there is a, for, uh, uh, I think majority of the analysis, how they usually have is usually they set up their, uh, his or her own uh, lab setting using the virtual machine rather than actually have physical machines and have connected to like, some of the other like, deep freeze or, or just fork. I never used it, but you know, having actual physical machine there and then remix it again, remix it again after you know, every single samples. I don't think most people don't do it, but for certain case, if malware, important malware that you need to analyze, it never runs on the VM, but sometimes it, there's no choice but actually running on the physical machine. So there's a way you can set up using physical machine, but uh, including our lab setting, we are going to use, uh, majority of people use a virtual machine and actually make a snapshot and then keep revert to the you know, clean state. And I think majority probably use the VMware, right? For this one, we have a virtual box, it's just you have been used, and there's uh, other virtualization solutions. So what I kind of figured that as a free one, virtual box is easy to use and uh, Easy, easy to install and easy to use. So I uh, select this one, but VMware, I think you should pay. If you want to use a free one, I, don't, I think you cannot make a snapshot, I think. So, all right, there's a different setting. Okay, uh, the virtual box. So who, who uses a VMware heavily? All right, so later on, when you try to set up with the virtual box, the network, uh, like a, a network, uh, these terms in how to setting up the network is slightly different. For example, if uh, the difference, what I noticed, if you have a host only uh, network, the host machine can listen to the traffic between the VM to another VM, right? But for the virtual box, you cannot. The host uh, host only, I know, sorry, host only network in the VMware, one, uh, if it's the same host uh, only network, one VM can uh, look at the uh, another traffic between the, the VM and their host this communication thing. But for the virtual box, you can the other VM cannot see host on the uh, traffic if we, one VM is talking to a host. It literally means between the uh, network communication between the VM and the host, and other VM cannot see it. And another one is a uh, internal network setting. I think VMware does not have this setting at all. They have like a net and. No, actually, that's not true. I think, yeah, I think everything they have a, this this concept. If it's an internal network, the multiple VMs they can talk to each other, but host cannot intercept the uh, traffic. So how, what I'm emphasizing here is uh, when, when you're trying to set up with the virtual buses, you know, this uh, network concept is slightly different. Okay, and for us for this lab setting, how I did it was like I made a two network. So I, when you see the virtual bus, you see the uh, VM uh, name victim and the another VM name is controller, right? So there is a two uh, host only network, one uh, host only network, one for between the victim and then host, and the other one uh, between the controller and then host. And how I have them, uh, these two VM talk to each other is I'm going to make the IP forwarding. Later on, I will ask you to uh, set up the IP forwarding so the host can intercept the uh, network uh, traffic. So one thing, I am explaining uh, slide 43. And when you actually go to your virtual box here, and the files, there's preferences. This is uh, the windows look slightly different, but for you, you're gonna be like a look like virtual box. Uh, you should say virtual box manager. Do you see that uh, window? Right? I just want you to go through the, how the, uh, this lab has been set up. 
when you see the files, so file preferences, it might take a little while when you open the new windows. And when you click network, you see the two different network. Right? This is a two host only networks here. And when you actually install VirtualBox, you will not see any network here. So you have to add explicitly using this button here. Okay. And I'm uh, looking, going through this uh, slide 44, just uh, showing you like how this uh, VBox net is configured. It is uh, at the network 56 for the VBox net zero. And for VBox net one is a uh, 70, uh, 57 network. Okay. And I'm going to slide 45. I would not ask you to do this one actually. Uh, let's see. 45. And how about slide 46? When you see the slide 46, and this table, you may later on uh, want to reference it while we are doing the lab. So victim, uh, I should, oh, okay. Let's, let, let, I will, let me uh, explain the victim VM first. So victim's IP is a 57.100, which means 57 network was a VBOX one. Right, because you, you need to know this one later on to use a Wireshark, which network interface to listen to, listen on. Uh, and for controller case, it is in the network 56, and the IP address is 56.20, the controller VM. But I think, uh, no, actually you're gonna use a controller as well uh, soon. And I'm moving to slide 47. Slide 47 is just showing a uh, network setting on the victim VM machine, victim VM. And slide 48, this one I need you to actually uh, enable the port forwarding because for this one, every reboot is actually reset to a zero, I mean you cannot do the IP port forwarding. So, I'm sure there is a, a permanent way to do it, but uh, okay, I should have not killed it. Hold on, okay. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, let me have a box running. Okay, on your host machine, Please follow the uh, two lines on uh, slide 48. Let me show you this one. You, sh you should not have anything. Uh, you should have a zero value right now. Right, is currently it should be set it as a zero, right? So you want to set it as a one. I think there should not be any space. Yeah, without any space, redirect one to proxies. Wait. Probably I should have a space. Okay, yeah, there should be space between before echo one space redirect and then space and the path is this one. So the uh, command you need to put it is in the slide 48. Echo one and four uh, redirect to IP underscore forward. 
Let me clean the screen. Can you see that? Everyone's good? Who needs to slide more time? Okay. Now let's go to this virtual box manager. And then let's start victim from the snapshot RC8. Start. Okay. And how about start the controller? And let's make sure when you highlight controller in the virtual box manager, let's highlight snapshot configure in the controller VM and click left, a right button, and select restore snapshot. Okay, restore it. And start. So, controller VM should have a gray background. In IP tables, you don't need to do anything. Actually, IP table when it actually comes, it enables everything. Uh, if you unless you actually configure to block uh, traffic. So, for that, for this one, please start the uh, controller. That uh, controller, no, no, not that controller VM as well. When you see virtual box manager, there is a controller. So make sure you have VM, uh, uh, victim VM and controller VM both running. When you actually start the controller VM, the background should be gray. Okay. From here, okay, let's go back to um, Okay, so I just uh, asked you to uh, do the enable the IP forwarding on the slide 48 and the slide from 49, 50, 51 actually is for how to, how to uh, configure Wireshark such that you can capture the natural traffic without the root privilege. So that's the explanation that is done in the uh, 49, 50, and 51, okay? I just still want to do, uh, remain it here. So you, once you come home, home, if you want to set up, then you need to follow these steps, okay? But for in our lab, I already configured such that you can capture the network traffic with a Wireshark without root privilege, okay? All right. So now let's go to slide 52. So we are at a slide 52. Okay. So and slide 52 says, can you ping from a uh, victim? Oh, no, victim. From the victim, can you do? Okay, hold on a second. Before that, let's start the wire chart. Are you guys good? You good? Okay. Please start Wireshark. And do you see capture? And I usually just go to options, right? but some people usually go to interfaces. But I'll usually just go capture in the Wireshark capture options. And now you see the interface, right? Let's se select interface of VBox Net 1. Keep in mind that the victim VM is on uh, VBox Net 1 network. Okay, so let's select VBox Net 1 and select. Now you're capturing the uh, network traffic that's coming from the uh, victim. 
VM. And let's go to victim VM here. And in the on the victim machine, let's go command cmd and ping. Let's go ping host first. That 57.1. So I'm getting the response. It's okay. So that offset is okay. So I'm currently on the slide 52. Okay. And that's ping controller machine, which is 56. No, no, no. 68.56.20. Right? Then see whether you can get the uh, ping, uh, ping response back. Do you see the ping response back? And now when you see the Wireshark, it, it actually capturing this uh, ping uh, packet, which is ICMP packet, right? ICMP ping request, ping reply, ping request reply. Once you see this uh, packet, then you are uh, good to go basically for the next lab. All right, so. Now we just check it is the network is set up good, everyone. Then, uh, sure. Veronica, so how do you, you have two the two uh, networks and route to the host? Yes, that's why I enabled IP forwarding. The reason okay. actually we the virtual box setting is different from VMware. If you VMware, you can just have a host only. Then you can see VM is you know having traffic on the host. Each host is on its own. Right. Segregated. Yes, virtual box. Only, yes. To point to the to the, to the, to the gateway is the host. host machine. Of, yes. So you can have it uh, the traffic go through the host. And then the host. How does the host have the routing? So, so how does the host do the routing? To the what? Sorry. Uh, the, 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 the host machine. So how does it do the, the routing? Routing. I keep routing. Yes. Yes. It doesn't have actually you know proper uh like a router setting but just doing the IP forwarding. Okay, I can see that. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we are at let's say slide fifty three. So we just captured natural traffic with a root privilege, but in general you do need a root privilege, you know, to do the packet capturing. Okay. And I move on to page 54, INSIM, MSDR page 54. So for now, I am going to close Wireshark. It's a quit without saving. I'm going to just close it. Quit without saving. I'm going to close. Uh, I will leave victims as it is yet for, for now. Let's close controller. If it asks a power off and then uh, restore snapshot to configure, then please check and then close it. So please close controller VM and make sure you restore to the snapshot name configured. Okay. So now you will have virtual box manager and you will have only victim VM is running. Right? Right. So I just opened the new terminal. For you, you will gonna be when you see that in the your left side, there will gonna be terminal icon. And please click new terminal. So make a new another terminal. Just have one terminal open. And let's go to the slide 54. Okay, to explain what is the INET SIM. So INSIM is a, a tool that is actually uh, 
simulating the common services, which can be like a DNS server or SMTP server, HTTP server. So some popular services is running, then the INS sim can uh, simulate those. So you don't have to set up your own, you know, any HTTP server or the uh, mail server or uh, some other popular servers. And the one that you have on your machine is the, the version number 1.2.4. And you can get it, you can download it, not downloading it, you can get it through the Ubuntu package manager rather than you actually getting the source code and compile it. So it, it was it is very easy to get the INS sim. And on the slide 55, on slide 55, I'm going to explain what I have modified it. Okay, when you see the slide 55. So it, you, you, on your machine, it is already configured. But let me op open it for you. So for actually this machine, it has a Emacs, VI, Nano, you know, some other text editor. So if you are familiar with those, please use it. Otherwise, you can use a G-Edit, just like I did. G-Edit, G-Edit. And Etsy, inesim, inesim So for again, please use tap as much as you can. So G edit, I put G E tap. Okay, it's not giving me the G edit. So put G E D tap. They gave me G edit. Okay, and slash Etsy, BTC and tap. And inesim again. So, so a few characters and the tab in inesim.com. Okay. And when you open uh, the file, that what I have modified, when you scroll down, it says service underscore find address. Right. So I change it as a find address is 57.1. Right. This will gonna be the host machine's address. Right. So I have changed it. By default, it comes with a 10.10.10.10.1. And another one I've changed is uh, DNS, DNS default IP. So by default, it returns 10.10.10.1, you know, but I change it such that you want to return as a host machine's IP. So these are only two lines I have modified on your machine. Right. So let's close it, close the, the inet uh, sim, sim.com file, and go back to, I am still at the slide of 55. Okay, and let's start, and since you have, um, on the terminal that you opened just, you know, just before, on here, any question? Okay, everyone has a new terminal? Everyone good? All right. Then please do sudo inesim. And please do not put the ampersand for now because it's easier to kill it if I, if I don't have uh, ampersand. So do put the password and enter. So what I did is a sudo that is in the, the slide 55. Sudo and I miss him. All right, so as you see here, now do you see a bunch of uh, the new ports open, which is uh, this I miss him is simulating, and uh, process ID that's associated with each services. Okay? Now you see here, now I miss him is running, and let's move, move to another, uh, the other terminal. From here, let's start Wireshark. Wireshark, I just started Wireshark. Okay. At the Wireshark, let's listen on VBoxNet1. That's where a victim VM uh, is. VM's network is, is uh, listening, using. So VBox net one, then start. And 
let's move to Victor VM. And let's start Internet Explorer. You can say, uh, just close it. This is S. All right, it has already something here, but when you go google.com on the victim's machine, right, it just gets some INS in the simulators default web page, right? You, so this is how you're simulating the network, right? I went to the google.com, this is my result I get that is given by the INS sim. Everybody's good? You got this one? All right. So that's I've just done 50, uh, slide 55. All right, I have written very good timing. All right, so I'm going to just close it now because we are now moving on to other topic. Please close the victim VM and restore to the snapshot RC8 and close the Wireshark. And on the INSC simulator, please put Control C. You can stop the uh, simulating network, network simulation, right? Control C. Then please just close this uh, terminal so you can have more clean uh, windows. Okay, so for now, I have only VirtualBox manager running. I don't have any VM running and have only one terminal. 